7 p.m. Our invocation this evening will be given by Blue Rosenberg. I think the mayor picks the one in the black jacket. <laughs> our Father, we ask for your blessings tonight on our proceedings. We know that you came and talked with Moses, and we know that you came and talked with Isaiah. We ask that you come and talk with us tonight. Be with all those here, all suffering from respiratory diseases and other illnesses. Forgive us our sins, guide us and direct us. Help us to be your servants. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We've established a quorum. Councilman Bernard Rodriguez, Councilman Guerrero, Councilman Ortiz, Councilman Tejada, and Councilman Nieto will be here shortly. Now, if everyone will stand for the U.S. Pledge and the Texas Constitution. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. comments regarding uh, my eligibility to sit on the council. Do you want that in the minutes? That should be part of the minutes and maybe you could ask him exactly what he said, but it was something about uh, whether I should be qualified to sit on the council. Some of that up there. Well, it should be on tape, right? Okay. She can refer back to it. Yes. Could we have the, the minutes then uh, tabled until there's uh, Additions are corrected for our next meeting. Is that a motion, Carmen? That's a motion. Okay, do I have a second? Second. We have a motion by Councilman Tejano, second by Councilman Ortiz. Councilman Rodriguez, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman Guerrero? Yes. Okay, motion carries 4 0. <coughs> Let's go on to the second meeting minutes. Of January the 22nd. Session. And I did uh, we reported also that no action was taken. I'll make a motion to 
through the minutes with correction on the uh, no action. The, on the no action. Okay. Is that a three? Yes. Proclamation Wilson County 1860 to 2015, whereas the Wilson County was cut out of Bear Cat Bear and Carnes Counties by an act of legislature on February 13, 1860. Whereas the Wilson County serves the communities of Wilson County with more than 44,000 residents and provide essential services to create healthy, safe, vibrant, and economically resilient communities. And whereas Wilson County built infrastructure, maintain roads and bridges, provide health care, administer justice, keep communities safe, run elections, manage solid waste, keep records, and much more. And whereas Wilson County takes pride in the responsibility to protect and enhance the health, welfare, and safety of its residents in sensible and cost-effective ways. And whereas Wilson County has served its residents since 1860 and having been in service for 155 years as county. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Mayor Garza, do hereby wish Wilson County a happy birthday of 155 years this day, February 12, 2015. Signed by the Honorable Mayor Diana Garza, City of Florida.
The Heikenbikes really were able to uh, apply on February 1st for some um, painting for the Heikenbike Trail. We're really excited about that. And there's a new tech that uh, is coming out that's due in May, and we're going to be applying for that as well. So hopefully we can get some grants going on for our Heikenbike Trail. CPG application has been completed, and thank you, Mayor, for signing the application. Uh, it's been submitted to them, and it's actually due in March, so we have that in time. Um, the mayor and I was able to attend the EDC board meeting last week, and um, what they're doing is they're going to be joining, joining with us for our workshop on February 17th. Uh, we're going to have two presenters. One's going to be talking about things. Some of them have seen before, like <coughs> social media and marketing is one. And then the other presenter is strategies, uh, retail strategies in reference to marketing for this area. And hopefully we can do some joint issues in reference to that. This is just a presentation. There will be no action asked. But we are having a joint meeting between the council and the EDC board. Our auditors, the auditors have almost completed their field work. Um, municipal court is the last department that needs to meet with the auditor. And following the completion of that audit testing, uh, we can set a day for the audit committee to meet to review the draft audit. Uh, it is very imperative that we make the goal of March 26, 2015, so we can go on and start meeting with our financial advisor as we select a bond council, as well as the workshops that we have planned in April with the 4A as we prepare for a reduction of that loan. Cycle Ranch, the owner of Cycle Ranch would like to present to you all next week, so I'm gonna put them on the agenda. I reference to partnering with some uh, activities he's having, he's um, having some events in May, that they bring in excess of about 5,000 people to the city of Floresville. So he's hoping that we can work together and partner, but I'll let him present to that to you next week. A uh, meeting and I will be meeting with Chris Stewart, who met with the city attorney already talking about annexation. So that is very important. He, I was up there just yesterday, passing by Richardson's uh, car, dealership there, the signs up, and he's coming. We need to go ahead and make sure that we're annexing that. We're going to start that process. We don't want to miss steps, so that's why we're meeting with the attorney and the consultant, Chris Stewart, uh, to help us to go forward. And we should be able to have a plan for you at the next meeting as to the dates that we need to hit. For example, public hearing, when the notices go out, those type of things are our goal. So we can lay out the plan, come up with those dates, and then start putting those dates forward. Um, um, the last thing is we have ordinances. and. I know that the secretary has prepared packages for you all, so everybody can have ordinances, and that's really, really important. We're going to be working with Chris Stewart on sign ordinances, fence ordinances, demolition, site work, parking ordinance review. Uh, and for parking, we're talking about, maybe you're suggesting something like an improved surface. So if you put crushed um, stone and or um, sidewalks, maybe concrete and or asphalt, and not necessarily grass or dirt, to allow people to do that. So we need to address that. And then, of course, land use ordinances. Uh, p and D worked very hard, and we had a land use plan, but because of some of the recommendations they're doing, we need to change some ordinances. And so those will be coming before you, and we'll start having some draft ordinances. Just to let you know what we're trying to do, and we're trying it again first time for tonight, we want to present you with ordinances. We can look at it, have staff come and give your opinion about it. We can have the dialogue. At one meeting, but not asking you to do any action. But at the next meeting, to take action, or subsequent meetings to take action at that time. Uh, we, we deal on this all day long. Staff choose on it, we work on it, we work with the attorneys, but it doesn't give you all the opportunity to digest it. So we're just going to try this effect and let me know how it works for you to give up ordinance, for you to review it, get back with staff, and then maybe at some subsequent meeting we can talk about passage. Okay? Mayor, that would be my report. Are you having any questions for me? Uh, yes, ma'am. The two presenters that we're having are coming in. I know retail coach, I know coach retail, is another presenter we may have, but we want to be respectful of your time and not have a meeting to last till 12 or 1 o'clock. So we want to be able to let the presenters have that to be able to shoot, uh, for you to be able to ask questions back and forth, and then at another time have other people present on the same topic, and then you can pick and choose. Okay? Uh, EDC is very excited about the meeting. Tommy Baker uh, has and I've met with them today to make sure that they stay respectful of the presentation for about 15, 20 minutes, and then leave it for discussion as well as questions for the presenters. Is that a meeting that's scheduled meeting? Is it uh, posted? Yes, 
that are actually posted it today is posted for city council as well as EDC. Yes. 
why it broke it out by month. Is that what you're asking? Okay. Why does our report say 2013 and 2013? Excuse me? On the file of cases, it says report for October 1st, 2013 to December 31st, 2013. Is that quarterly report for the same month? But we're not in 2013. No, we're just comparing 13 to 14. You know. oh. But the increase was or decrease was in 2013, the same three months, in 2014, the same three months. And uh, you got a copy of 13, right? For the same quarter? You know, at the same quarter? I just don't see the, the relevance of it. You know, we're kind of comparing the, the difference. Some of those can be dismissed, you're saying? <clears throat> no, I think those there, see, the people come in to pay, I mean, the, the cases are filed, and then they come in and they try to make an arrangement with Brandy, and then, you know, they promise. So these are still working cases? Excuse me? Those are still working cases? Yeah. Okay. They come in, you know, and they make a deal, and then they promise they're going to do it in three months or six months, and, and then you don't see them again, you got to go pick them up. concerned about whether they would be able to use cell phones for their own meeting. Uh, how would we know or somebody like just recently the city of San Antonio passed that law and some of the own city council members were still using the phones after they passed it. And so the chief wanted to know how are we going to be able to t detect whether they were using their own cell phones for <coughs> personal use or you know city. Uh, my view on it is I don't like government, too much government telling us what to do. Now, as far as uh, I can see around the school area, where it's congested, we have a lot of traffic, yeah. But out of the city limits, if we haven't had any reports of, of uh, accidents due to cell phones, I don't think we need to impose that on the citizens. Uh, 
you know, maybe further studies need to be made, but I don't think that you put a, a, a stoplight at every four-way stop that has an accident until you do a study, you know, the effects of that. So uh, that's just my opinion. I don't think we need to force any more government rules on, on the public until it really becomes necessary. And at this point, I just I don't think we need to do that. May I say something, Madam Mayor? This is a distraction, ladies and gentlemen. All it takes is four seconds for fatality. So far, like Councilman Guerrero says, it's all right. But ladies and gentlemen, when they come knocking at your door, BD, telling you that there's a fatality and it's your daughter, and you have to go and identify her. That's sad. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, we talked about this about four years ago. And at that time, it was being discussed in the legislature. And I know the legislature didn't uh, didn't pass it. Is, is that why we didn't pass it here as a local ordinance and we were waiting for the state to do something? Do you remember? But at that time, it was uh, texting and driving, not, not, not necessarily hands-free. Is that what, what it was? That's my recollection of it. Governor. Uh, <laughs> the uh, previous legislature, uh, the bill was approved in the House. It didn't make it into the Senate. However, the uh, uh, governor said that he would veto the bill if it didn't make it to his desk for basically the same reasons that uh, Councilman Carrero stated. Uh, those were his reasons as well. <coughs> So we, if we did that, we'd have to eliminate people eating tacos on the way to work in the morning or putting their makeup on. Uh, you know, I see more people put makeup on than I do on cell phones. Well, maybe not. But I think that's a, there's a rating ordinance like that. It's called reckless driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. This is just a di discussion, ladies and gentlemen. So we want to hear from you. you know, huh? Step up front, sir. We got too many laws as it is. You can't guarantee anyone's safety, no matter how many laws you pass. You can't even guarantee your own safety. So we don't need any more laws in the books. I agree with the gentleman there. But it's a distraction, sir. Hey, everything's a distraction. Birds flying, uh, the sun hitting in the sky, me driving a French fry and taking a drink of my water while I'm driving on the road, the squirrel running in front of you. Gonna pass the law against all that too? Officer Evans, can you come and make a presentation, sir? Sure. Sir, what is your name for the record? Paul. Uh, Paul. Last name? Paul. 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 Thank you. Uh, I was asked to uh, look into it. unfamiliarity with it. Of course, San Antonio has recently passed an ordinance. Um, I've looked at the ordinance and it's well written. Um, actually, the draft that would apply to Floresville is well written. Um, and it addresses the issue as we know it. Um, some of the problems, as we've seen in the, in the state legislature, as was mentioned, are and mentioned here tonight, are you know it's another law um, that may or may not address the issue. Here's the problem: uh, if texting and driving using a cell phone is a distraction that is documented. There's no question. You're approximately four times likely, more likely, to have a, a an accident while you're doing that sort of thing uh, than if you weren't. The problem is. The studies as they exist right now show no difference, basically, between hands-free or a handheld device. Uh, so if you're using a cell phone and you got it to your ear, you're about four times more likely to be in, a, in an accident. But that also applies to a hands-free device from what they know right now, okay? Um, 
The distraction is the problem, whether it's texting, whether it's talking on the phone, whether it's using a handheld device, whether it's using a hands-free device. Uh, the intent, without question, is a good thing. Getting on the forefront of, of protection, of course, our law enforcement agency is for that. The question to you all is, is this specifically going to address the issue? And that's not a question that I can answer because the studies don't support that it is or is not. It, it's a question. So you've got to decide whether you want to, you know, take this step and and create the ordinance on the hopes that it's going to prevent some things, and, and maybe you'll, you know, in the future you'll find that hey, we made the right decision, uh, or five years down the road we'll find through studies that it had no impact whatsoever on actual uh, death rates or crash rates within our city and state. Um, and, and, and that's the best information I can give you. The information is not clear other than distraction while driving will cause more accidents. How that distraction comes, nobody can really agree on. Um, hands free, handheld, that sort of thing. So it's kind of a, a muddy water situation. Uh, so it's up to you to make the right decision and decide you know, which way to go based on you know, citizens uh, and your constituents. That's, I know that's as clear as mud, but that, you know, that's about where we're at. How many fatalities have been uh, reported due to utilizing phones or texting? In our city, we have statewide. Not, statewide, I don't have those facts. Uh, I know that it's probably considerable, and in, in my okay. opinion, it's like anything else. If if there's one, that's one too many. Exactly. So so we we agree there. Uh, the question is, how do you prevent that one death or that? That even if it's you know five, ten, twenty, whatever the number is, how can we prevent that? And can we prevent that by legislation? If we can't, then it makes no sense to to do so. If we can, it makes absolute sense to do so. I can't answer the question because again, the numbers uh, there's no clear cut studies at this at this time regarding hands free versus handheld. So it, you know uh, you know you've got to make that decision. Let me ask you, if, if we should pass this ordinance, could it be tied in into highways or thoroughfares that are uh, associated with a certain speed limit? In other words, on Highway 181, where it's 55 or 60 or, or, or 70 on the, on the highway, versus coming down Peach Street, where it's just a residential area. Could that I, I don't see that that would create a problem. In other words, I think you could enact a zone. A zone. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I don't see. And under my, you know, my knowledge, I don't think you'd have an issue with that, but I'm not sure. I, I would rely on the city attorney to do that research as far as the charter goes. Uh, but I, I don't think that would be an issue. I think you could create a zone that would do that, as the state has done with the school zone. So. I apologize for chewing gum. But my ears, I, I've been under the weather, my ears are popping up. I'll make a comment. <coughs> this is where we ourselves need to be responsible. Okay? I use two phones and I have to tell myself, you can't drive and talk at the same time. If I had a hands free, it'd be the same problem for me because you still have to set it, you're still talking, you're still distracted of what you're doing. I mean, totally. So it has it has to be an individual responsibility. And I would like to see how, how it works for San Antonio before we try to implement it. You know, there's a lot of things that we do in our vehicles, like Johnny said, eating a taco, drinking coffee. How many times do we spill it and we're looking, trying to clean ourselves up or whatever, and you're driving? That's just as dangerous. There, there are some studies that indicate, and one of them was out of Texas A&M, that you use about 30% less of your attention driving specifically while you're in a conversation. So that is a little bit different. Eating, you know, that's requires gross motor skills. You pick it up and eat. Uh, maybe putting on makeup. And that's what we call them, gross motor well, skills. Well, the well, foil on your lap and eating over the foil so it doesn't fall on your well, back. I've been doing that since I was, so it's okay. easy. But what I'm getting at is the actual conversation using your brain is where the actual distraction comes. Uh, 
and so that is there is a difference between eating uh, and a few other things and then having a discussion and texting of course so there, there are some studies that indicate there is a difference there. Uh, so I would caution you not to lump it all together. Um, texting, talking on the cell phone is a distraction. It, it, you are four times more likely to be in, a, in an accident. But how to prevent that from happening, I, I don't know and I can't answer. I think Councilman's got some great points, but and, you know, as is Councilman Guerrero, you, know, you have to make that decision and, and you know, go from there. I can only give you the information that we found, and it's, again, it's not clear cut at this time. Drinking and driving is a law, but it still happens. Absolutely. No difference. Madam Mayor, could we continue this discussion with a public hearing sometime in the future, maybe next month, or? <coughs> yep. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Madam Mayor, General Paul. Yes, sir. Yes. Instead of passing a law, we could like go to the school and have the math teacher have the kids calculate the forces involved in a 50 mile an hour collision. It's a simple equation, and and just those forces alone is enough to shred the human body into spaghetti. I mean, if the kids can work with the numbers and understand it, I think they have a better appreciation for the mass of that automobile and how tragic it would be for them to be in a collision. That's all I have. The equation here, Madam Mayor, is safety is a priority. I mean, it, it is a distraction. Why do we have to wait for a fatality and then jump on board and pass an order? It's be proactive. I don't, I don't disagree in that, but you know what? I remember back when y'all passed, it was past the, uh, the kids being in a car seat. I didn't pass it. Tell me how many parents you see that actually put their children who is really very important in our lives, in a car seat, and they get killed in an accident, fly out the door or whatever. That to me is a lot more important when you're gonna save a child's life. All lives are important, Madam Mayor, yes. with all the respect. <coughs> all I'm saying is, is we just have to be careful how we implement something and see how it works before we jump. I'm not against it, I'm saying. Thank you, Madam. Any other questions? I was going to put the county on the spot on it, but I said that. Okay, now we're going to go on to item 3A, consideration and action to approve the cop funding as a third engineering firm approved by the city of Forestville. Can I see the both of them at the same time? Because there's two. You can't pull it on one or the other. Say the question again, please. Mr. What is the recommendation of the staff? Our staff would recommend Todd Sunday as a third engineering firm of the city of the We do not recommendation. May I add to that, Matt? <coughs> uh, they're both, you know, reading, reading and, and, and hearing both of them, they're both pretty much the same. Uh, and I'll forgive them that they're both Aggies. So, uh, but again, Years. I think he's even 
he would talk to Mr. Dawson when he was here. Uh, I don't know if he talked to uh, Mr. Harris when he was here, but he showed interest prior, so he's attended on his own meetings. And uh, I've, I've, I guess I've known Mr. Dupont since then. And uh, I would uh, make a motion to approve the cop family as a third engineering firm approved by the city. Say that they know they don't get the start, so we have the permit in hand and the check is made out. 
We may shut down one through. One is not I'm just trying to make sure it's an answer the question that was asked by the councilman and for audit purposes, if this is a pure pass-through, then we can treat it as a pass-through for audit. It's not something we're going to make any money on, but it's an obligation. And just to go back with an experience the council had two years ago that the county mayor may not be familiar with, on the La Quinta over there, we had the Bank of America and their lawyers and their land use firm insist that we have a Christmas meeting for the 16 feet that Veritas didn't catch because we didn't use Veritas on it on the back zoning variance. And so the Veritas function is to make sure we're following our own ordinances and our own rules in how we grant our building permits. And if you'll remember, we had to have a meeting between Christmas and New Year's to allow that function to go forward. <coughs> So what we're really doing is we're paying for a pass-through for Veritas to function on our behalf to make sure we're following our own rules. Does that answer your question, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes. Okay, I have a motion. I so move to approve the refund and the county administrative fees paid on permits issued before the ordinance 2014-020 was passed. Second, man. And for the purpose of the audit, can we ask the city council to Thank you. 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 That's 55. Right. There's about half the lots are the kind of variants. That's what there was in the photos, right? They're, uh, they're well, the ones that are actually running perpendicular to the street, mainly there. Um, yeah, it has other lots. Yeah, like plots. Lots, uh, <coughs> lots three, three, four, maybe five, uh, nine, ten, and eleven. So we have.
have those lots listed in the application that we submitted to the city. We paid the, uh, the variance fee, but we noted those lots in the application. So it's, it's lots like lots three, four, five. Three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. 